What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be building my 125 gallon reef tank. Alrighty guys, so here's the tank right here, the 125 gallon. Sorry you can't see it too well, you kinda can. It's literally taking up the whole back of my truck. It's six foot long, and the hard part is it's gonna be getting this through my house. Now, I have somebody on the way to come help me, but this tank, you know, with no water in it, just how it sits is about 220 pounds, uh, and it's six foot long, and it's kind of hard to manage. But luckily, you know, you have to kind of watch out in some houses. You have to go through windows and stuff to get into the room. If you have to navigate some tight corners with such a large, big, heavy object, but I have a straight shot. You see that back there? That is the, the stand. So straight shot to my office or video studio back there through this door right there. So before we go into the build, I want to talk about the aquascape because I ordered the rocks about two weeks previous of even ordering the tank and started playing around with the rocks, stacking them, creating cool structures, epoxying them together. I found a really cool glitch on Amazon where this this certain brand had these rocks for sale for a 40 pound box was only 80 dollars which if you've done any shopping on rocks that's really good at two dollars a pound certainly for this purple stuff so it is fake it's not real it's not live rock it's all dry but that's how i wanted to set this one up and i played around with the rocks you know outside of well even before i got the tank uh and got really unique scapes and I'm going to show you how I set those up and then we'll get back to the plumbing and the rest of the tank. Let's get to it guys. Let's start the start the action. I was playing. I've seen a lot of builds where they kind of make it like really small at the bottom to give fish, you know, places to hide underneath there and then they come up and they make their their uh, island, so to say, they get bigger. It's like actually the opposite of how you would stack rocks. But when you make stuff like this, you can balance it and even glue it to the bottom of the tank if it doesn't balance very well. But that, you know, if you plan out stuff, you can come up with some really unique scapes that people haven't seen before. So I decided to use some old arrows that I had laying around to use as the support dowels. I've seen people use, you know, like plexiglass dowels or whatever, like small little plastic dowels. I had these laying around. They're super strong. They're small diameter. And, you know, I used a ceramic or a, a concrete drill bit and made the holes. It was that easy. So I ended up using some greenhouse paneling. You can use acrylic sheets or anything uh, that you would like to glue the base of these columns. So I'm gonna call these my base rocks or I made them like column like to where they're skinny at the bottom and it creates these cool caves and cliff faces and stuff like that. But it was just super easy and super strong. I don't have to worry about these things, you know, crashing into my glass or falling over because they're very strong. You'll see from a better angle uh, that they're glued down to these bases and then covered up with sand on top of that. So I made these pieces super module to where when I put them in the tank, I could move them around and still uh, create a scape that I liked in the tank. So I ended up not going with that big arch design, but you'll see what I went with and I'm super happy with it. All right, well, there it is. It looks a little funny because it's cold outside and the glass fogged up. So. It, it's gonna have to unfog it was really cold it's warm in here but there it is in place it's massive it fits on the stand well now i gotta put in these bulkheads and start on the plumbing i'm gonna do more like time lapse stuff on this i'm not gonna explain everything i know plumbing is gonna be boring to most people so i'm gonna try to go through it quick uh i just don't feel the need to do a whole big segment on the plumbing even though it is kind of a lot of people really like you know putting a lot of time and effort into the plumbing and like plumbing design, so to say, which is kind of cool. There's uh, a thousand ways you can skin a cat, so to say, and plumbing is definitely one of those things where you can do it a million different ways. But uh, I'm gonna throw a little chart on the screen of how I'm gonna do my plumbing. I have, you know, posted on forums about it. I've, you know, talked to a lot of people 
Uh, I've actually made multiple designs and posted it on there and I've got a lot of good information on the forum Reef to Reef. Uh, so that the, the little image I put up there is the one I'm gonna go with. All right, so basically what I'm trying to do with the overflow is a Herbie overflow. One is going to be full siphon, one is going to be like a emergency pipe. Uh, just in case some of y'all are going to be like, uh, you, you need more than, on a tank this big, you need more than two dedicated returns. I mean, not returns, overflows. This pump chamber right here is super small. I don't know if you, how well you can see it, but theoretically, in this sump, the way I've built it, if my system were to get clogged up top or anywhere along in the plumbing somehow if both one inch pipes uh, were to get clogged uh, this would run dry before it flooded the tank like literally there's only about i don't know four four gallons maybe in that return chamber so four gallons is not going to flood a 125 gallon tank it's, it's just not possible so i can't really run uh or I can't really flood the tank, but I can, I guess you'd say, burn these pumps up. But this is also kind of really hard. Certainly, you don't want to do this if you're not going to run an auto top-off system because this is where you're going to see your evaporation. This is where everything is going to happen, and this is very small. Uh, so basically, all of this up there is evaporating, and right here is where the water level would change. Now you definitely want to do like a RO water to a solenoid type system. More on that later. I know that probably sounds crazy, but I'm going to run my RO system to where it's on a solenoid with the sensor to where it'll automatically put water in here and keep it level. A uh, uh, little bitty fuge light on here. That's what you see the purple is. And the sump doesn't obviously need a light, but I do plan on putting like some under cabinet lighting just where I can see when I get in here to clean it. and. Y'all okay? <laughs> uh, when I get in there to clean it, you want to be able to see the dirt and all that stuff. So, the tank is plumbed. Now it's time to clean up all this mess, all the glue. Let me put this cap back on and uh, we're, we're gonna get to the scape, which is I'm super excited about the scape. Now you're probably wondering what the heck is going on here. I uh, put a, a layer of saran wrap on the inside of this thing to where I can still see through it when I'm designing, but I would literally cry if I scratched this glass, uh, you know, when I was setting up the scape. So just uh, the best thing I could come up with to, you know, give me some protection to still be able to see what I'm working on uh, is I just put some saran wrap and use some scotch tape to hold it up just to where I have a nice layer of protection. All right, guys, I'm done with the scape. Uh, I ran out of battery twice. I basically videoed for like four hours because that's how long uh, I was moving rocks around. I mean, my hands are like worn out, like dusty from all those rocks. But I like the scape. I'm gonna show you all close. It has a lot of dimension. Uh, I might bat, buy some, some rocks, some like, you know, from the local fish store that I like. I need some like, arches and stuff like that so you know that always adds some good dynamic but i'll show y'all what i got so one of the main views i want it to look good is from here and i think it looks pretty good uh, i'm still going to put a lot of smaller rocks in the little cracks to make it look more you know one piece but there you go it's kind of like you can see all the way up so there's nothing really blocking the view up in the in the foreground everything is scaled correctly uh, I am gonna put some smaller rocks some individual rocks down here in these open spaces uh, so if you see it kind of like has two big open sand areas 
And I mean, it's got a ton of like crevices and caves and I mean like, look through here. It's, I definitely, a lot of these rocks are glued so you don't have to worry about them falling. And they'll look good when sand butts up to them. It's kind of hard to imagine it right now. There's that cave right there. Something's gonna enjoy that. Uh, I have a lot of glare on the glass because I have all these lights on in here. Here's a huge cave, a uh, nice little overhang, another little overhang area, and another overhang that way. So let me back up, show y'all the whole thing. Man, when I added in the live sand, the aquascape just came together and those small little island rocks there in the front and those bigger sand patches, it just made the scape flow and look so organic. Uh, I love it. And here in this video, you see me installing some wire organization pieces and the heaters. So I ran in the system two 500 watt heaters to be redundant. I know if one 500 watt heater could probably keep it up to the temperatures that I would want, like 79 degrees, but I ran two, just the redundancy. One of the heaters in the, is in the display tank and one is in the sump. And they have, both have separate temperature probes that you can place wherever to where you can get a pretty, you know, dialed in temperature. There's not gonna be any uneven water, you know, it's gonna be pretty redundant. I know it's overkill, but that's kind of how I wanted to set up this tank. And there's gonna be a pretty large skip in the video. In this next clip, you'll see that I got the reef lights in and I designed a hood system for this tank. I don't like a lot of traditional hoods or tops, whatever you wanna call them, because they're hard to you know get in and feed and do maintenance on your tank. But with my design, I'm super happy with it and I'm gonna show it to you the best of my ability. All right, so the hood is made out of the same material as the bottom. If you're wondering where you can pick this material up, I got it from Lowe's. It's literally just like a one quarter inch piece of plywood with a vinyl sticker over it. They have a lot of different patterns. I just like this one. It looks rustic. I like the white, it looks sleek. It kind of matches the, the reef look when it comes to like maybe like a, uh, I don't know, just the white looks beachy. I didn't want to do like dark brown or anything cause it doesn't, that would look more like, uh, I don't know, not beachy. So the white looks good in my opinion. And you'll see in a second where the hood folds backwards to where I can get in there and easily maintenance the tank. The whole thing folds backwards. Well, majority of it. And it just makes it so easy to maintain the tank and feed and all of that. So um, I really like the design. The only thing I regret is leaving the black rims of the tank shown. I should have made the bottom and the top go down a little bit more that's the only complaint but overall it looks really well so the reasons i went with a aquarium hood is because i bought cheap lights let's be honest these are you know chinese black box style lights you get on amazon they're only a hundred dollars a piece which that seems like a lot to most people but trust me if you start looking at some of the name brands i would end up having to buy about a thousand dollars worth of lights for this this tank and you know, that's not really in my budget, and I thought these would do fine because I'm going to do, you know, easier style corals for now, and maybe later I'll move up, but I, I like these lights. They're a little bulky, so under the hood, you can't see them, and all the wires are hidden, everything, so I'm super impressed. You can tone these lights. There's two different channels, a blue and a white, and, you know, I've, I have run the blue pretty much wide open and the white not so much. And uh, yeah, that's that's the system so far. You can see I used uh, just door hinges and to help me assist the, the, the heavy hood with the three lights on it, I used some you know gas struts that you would see like on a truck's toolbox or just, I don't know, you can find these at various hardware stores. The back is open with an, a mesh bottom if you look closely to where it still lets, you know, air in and out but it doesn't the mesh keeps the fish from jumping out and it just kind of sits on top of there and uh i have a few places to where it can't you know fall off even though it's very heavy it it won't fall off but that's pretty much it i like i came up with the design because i don't like a lot of hoods where when you you know fold the lid back like so the lights are 
pointed up at the ceiling, but you can see here how I added a small little bracket with some cabinet hinges to, you know, let the light fall down to where I can work. If, you know, I'm moving around corals or cleaning, you need some light. And there you see the knobs where you can uh, tune the color. There's a white channel and a blue channel, and you know, I've pretty much these are your basic entry level cheap lights, but they seem to be very well built in my opinion, and uh, we'll see how they do. Most people just say that one complaint about e these are, you know, they'll burn out quick, and they won't last five years like some of the other ones, but there you go. There's a closer look at the gas strut system. It's pretty easy, and... It just helps me a little bit with keeping the stand, I mean the, the lid back and assisting it while up because you're going to need them. The, the whole lid probably weighs about, I don't know, 60 pounds because those lights are heavy with all the wood. It's just a very well built system but those things help me a lot. So I'm showing off here where you can daisy chain the wires and only have one wire going down to your, uh, you know, your electrical panel. So one wire runs all three of those lights, which I really like. There's the brand name of the, the black box. If you'd like, there's a lot of different ones. I think these are pretty well built. They have a power switch on the side where you can turn them off. And overall, I'm impressed with, with the quality of them for you know they're about a hundred bucks I'm running these on a Wi-Fi based timer to where I can control the lights from my phone it is just an on and off I don't think there's any you know dimmable dimming capabilities with these lights they're either on or they're off uh, there's no app connected through the light I've used a Wi-Fi based plug-in to basically, you know, I can set up a schedule on my phone. But other than that, the lights are on or off. There's no ramping or anything like that. But for, you know, a hundred bucks for each light, you can't really beat it. Uh, yeah, you can pay a few hundred extra dollars for each light and get some crazy capabilities. But, you know, this will do. We'll see how the corals like it. And I think it's a pretty good setup. You can see here at the top, I've used these little like drywall anchors I think that's what these things are I just kind of thought of this as a design where you can like get it the right size and slide it over tighten it up a little bit and you know the lights in place so that's pretty simple and I know there's probably some better designs that you could come up with on this little the the hinge system for the lights but this one works so now that we've talked about the lights and the hood let's talk about the stand I decided to do a big one door uh, hinge system to where I could get in there and work easily. I added some under cabinet lights and decided to use a direct RO to solenoid sensor uh, auto top off system. So I don't have an auto top off reservoir, it comes straight from the RO. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. The last thing I'm going to cover is the refugium. It's a 15 gallon tank that I had laying around. It used to be fresh water, but I converted it to be a refugium, grow some macroalgae and some microfauna. And that's pretty much it guys. So here is the 125 gallon build. Now I just got to let it cycle in. It's been up and running for about two weeks now. And I'm just waiting, you know, another two weeks or so to get it stocked up and it should be an awesome beautiful tank i'm gonna have corals fish the whole nine yards so leave me a like let me know some of your general concerns uh, just some future video ideas and thanks so much for watching this video guys subscribe if you like what you've seen and i'll see you in the next video